My name is Jeff Picorni. I'm service director with the City of University Heights. And uh, tonight we're putting on a uh, seminar uh, regarding tree pruning and the city's uh, tree pruning and removal program that we do annually around the city. Uh, normally this program is performed in the fall uh, through the winter and hopefully we, uh, we don't remove too much foliage from the trees during that period. So uh, uh, we're pretty much looking at the trees while they're in a dormant state and removing branches, removing trees while they're in a dormant state. Uh, the city does this annually, as I said. Uh, it's a program that's uh, meant to provide many benefits to the trees in the city. Uh, we are only uh, looking at those trees on public property. So the trees we are working with are the ones on the tree lawn or in the parks and public property areas. Um, every year we, we take a look at the trees. Uh, we pick out an area of the city. We have a five-year program where we try to make it through the entire city once every five years. Uh, we've been doing pretty well with that in recent years and I think we're pretty much on that schedule now. We've gone around the entire city during the last five years. Um, the way we handle the program is we pick out the streets in the zone. Uh, we have four zones that we go through. We pick out streets within that zone and we try to touch pretty much every tree within the street uh, that we're doing a whole street pruning of. Uh, this year we've uh, done a number of streets. I have a map here if somebody's interested at some point as to where we are this year. Uh, but basically we're doing uh, Bethany, uh, Grenville, uh, Glendon, Conover, Clear Ridge Oval, a portion of Edgerton, a portion of Belvoir from Carroll South down to Fairmont, and the streets of Rubyvale and Lafayette. Um, when we set the program up to do this, uh, we have a city arborist who is a consultant who will go out and look at each of the trees and prepare a recipe per se of what needs to be done with each of the trees. That uh, is then put together into a list and a bidding document that we put out uh, for bids, open bids from tree companies that are qualified who also have arborists and enough equipment to perform the job. And the low bidder is then presented to council for approval. Those lists are usually put out onto the internet, on the city's website, uh, whenever we have a list ready for bidding. So notifications go out that way. And then uh, once we have a bid uh, and a low bid recommendation from council, we do an award and the contractor who's selected then has usually 60 to 90 days, maybe even 120 days to perform the pruning. Um, now I'll turn it over to our arborist, Tom Morgan, who actually creates that recipe that we follow and he'll give a little further explanation as to how that's done. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good evening. Uh, as Jeff said, I'm the uh, arborist for the city. Um, my name is Tom Morgan. I've been with the city. Uh, this is my sixth year. And um, like Jeff said, we're trying to go throughout the entire city and take care of the trees. We have over 10,000 trees in our inventory. And as you can imagine, they're of all ages. We have some um, very young trees, we have some medium age trees, and we have some older specimens. Um, when we do the entire street pruning, we want to do different types of pruning for each age tree or each size tree. Uh, it's not one size fits all, so we have to um, address each tree by its specific needs. Um, we have a lot of different species of trees and each species has a different requirement for maintenance as well. Um, the city of Cle uh, University Heights, I'm sorry, University Heights is a city of beautiful trees. Um, and my, I'm here to tell you that one of the reasons that it's called the um, beautiful homes, I'm sorry, beautiful homes, uh, I've got trees on my mind. The reason that uh, the homes are beautiful are the um, trees. And that's one of the top 10 reasons for moving into the city. Uh, it's frequently specified as the tree line, tree streets. Um, the city of University Heights is proud to announce that this will be our 40th year of being a Tree City USA. 
in the state of Ohio. Um, I believe there's only two cities uh, that share that number. We were the first year to get that Tree City USA Award. We're very proud of that, and as a result, we t uh, do a lot of work to, to maintain that and earn that award every year. Um, we have an ongoing tree pruning program, as Jeff mentioned. That tree pruning program involves um, inspections on a regular basis. We have homeowner requests to come out and look at the trees. We also look at uh, the entire city um, on a um, semi-annual or quarterly basis to look at, to scout for hazards, look for hanging branches, anything that might be a safety issue, as well as look at uh, maintenance and needs that may be met the following year. Um, so this project uh, results in safe, beautiful tree-lined streets, and in this project uh, that we are almost complete, uh, involves over 600 trees. Many of our trees need corrective pruning. I'm also a school teacher, so when I go into class, uh, there are some students that need uh, some correction occasionally in redirection, and the same thing happens with trees. Um, trees tend to be wild uh, in an open area. They're going to grow every which way. So um, that would be nice if we, our trees were in wide open areas. They're not, however, they're on uh, tree lawns. And when there's a lot of um, utility above ground and below ground, street light issues, and um, truck clearance and sidewalk clearance. So our trees can't be wild. We have to maintain them in a certain order. And it's best when you start when they're young, very young trees, um, just like education. If you start your children on the right path early, the results are going to be positive. Um, so that's why we have a number of pruning types. You can see there's a before and after. And I'm sorry, that is um, so small. But what it's shown is the trees have had um, a uh, clearance raising up. They've been thinned out. We're looking for weak branch angles, weak branch attachments. And we're looking, obviously taking out dead and dying branches. We start when um, we're, we're looking for clearance. Um, if you notice the stop sign is blocked, that's a major safety issue, especially when the leaves are on the tree. Um, so we have to have a clearance. By the Ohio Revised Codes, it states 14 feet for over the streets. And, um, it, and anywhere you see cities go for eight to nine feet over the sidewalk. Okay. We're looking for a little bit more than that because we're on a pruning cycle, and the pruning cycle means we may not be back to this tree in anywhere between five to ten years. So as children grow, you, you know that they spread out. As trees grow, they spread out. So we have to maintain that, and we have to anticipate how they're going to grow. You know what species they are. You know what vigor they have you can anticipate where they're going to grow, and you can anticipate what pruning needs are going to be needed. So in a code one, um, which is our easiest one to do, is just simply raise the tree up, inspect it for any defects, and prune out any dead branches that may be hanging low. Okay, That's a minimal requirement. And as you can see, the tree um, has an improved look and it's much healthier. Less damage from trucks, less wounding, means less insect and disease pressure. The, le the less wounding we do, the healthier our trees are. Code two involves more work, and it's usually on a medium-sized tree, and what um, that means is that the, our contractor gets in and looks at the entire tree. He's doing a raising up, which I call giving a haircut, He's also, he or she, in this case our climber happens to be female, so pardon me if I use he a lot, Betsy. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, idea is to get the person in the tree and inspect the tree up from above ground. I look at the tree from the ground level up. There's two different perspectives and we rely on the contractor a lot. 
But the uh, con contracting for code two involves raising up, looking at all the branch angles and crotches. It involves uh, pruning out any deadwood and uh, looking for cavities or squirrel damage, anything you can't see from the ground, and you know, reporting back to us. Sometimes there's broken branches, sometimes there's stubs, um, and all that needs to be taken care of because we don't want to pull away from the tree and have a hazard left in the tree. So code, tree involves, code two pruning involves a little bit more work. Code three is where we're trying to get a mature tree and they, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mention diameters. Code one could be any diameter. Code two also any diameter. It's, it's more by height. So a code tr two tree would be a medium sized tree. We have quite a few of those. We have honey locusts, we have little leaf linden, we have red maples. Code three pruning typically involves our large trees. We have silver maples, we have pin oaks, we have red oaks, we have white oaks. Um, that's about it for the big trees. But obviously that involves more work. They are mature trees. And a mature tree, just like a, uh, an adult human being, may look good from the outside, but as you're well aware, uh, it, there's a lot of things hidden inside. So we're assessing the tree for defects. We're looking for rot, branch rot, trunk rot. We're looking for bad angles that break in storms. Um, we're looking for branches that can't take a heavy snow or ice load. And we're thoroughly inspecting the tree. We're not only looking above ground, but we're looking at the ground level and trying to figure out what's going on below ground. Because as you well know, these big trees have a, have a propensity to heave sidewalks, possibly get into sewers, uh, may cause um, have a conflict with underground utilities. So we, we're looking at the tree above ground and below ground at, um, and assessing it. Unfortunately, when we find things that are not are big safety issues, if you notice this tree is, I wonder if we could, could you turn off the overhead lights? That might have broke. Uh, we find def defects, unfortunately. Some of our trees are as old as the city. Mayor, I believe the city would, uh, was incorporated in the 1950s, around there. So our trees are 70 years old in some cases. 70-year-old trees have defects. These, this tree um, is out in an open field and has major uh, trunk rot, branch rot, and um, is a tree that will fail. We don't know when. We don't, we're, and I'm not a gambler, so we try to assess the potential for failure and do something about it before it fails. So code four, we end up with a tree being removed. Um, a lot of times that's not a popular thing. People don't want to see a tree that they may have uh, bought the house for or they've been in the house and they've watched it grow. Um, so it's not a popular thing, but when I explain why we're taking the tree down, a lot of people understand. We grind out the stump and then we plant the new tree. Okay, the uh, tree has to be uh, specified for what's available on the tree lawn. Um, so we have very wide tree lawns and we have very narrow tree lawns. So tree species varies, but we try to plant at least one tree for every tree we take out. Code four is where we can do the most work and I see the most benefit, code five, I'm sorry. And we call that young tree training. Okay, the YTTP program is where we like to get the trees shortly after we purchase them from a nursery. They could be seven to 10 years old from the nursery. We give them a couple years in the ground and then we like to prune them and start training them. You can see that in the first year, um, there's branches almost to the ground. Well, that works when they're young, but obviously that would be a conflict with sidewalk clearance. And then uh, if you do this right, every um, anywhere five to seven years, you prune the tree, you let it recover from the pruning, come back and do some more structural pruning. 
by the end of the third round, these young trees will be almost defect free. And then they should weather the environment much better. So code five is where we can do the most benefit. Code zero I like because that tree is in good shape and requires no work at the present time. And some of our trees on the street, you may wonder why you missed a tree. Well, that tree has been coded as a zero. We pruned it recently, does not need any more pruning at this time, and uh, we skip it. Um, it's also a benefit to the tree that it's not getting wounded on a regular basis. It recovers from that first pruning, and then we may not have to touch that for 10 years or more. So the question is, is your tree on the list? And this is where some people call and say, well, we don't have a tree in the tree line. Well, then we're not going to be pruning it, obviously, but you're welcome to call and ask for a new tree. Either Jeff or I come out and assess the tree lawn, and we have a, a list of suggested species. We have small trees. In other words, they mature at under 25 feet. They're great for under wires or where there's a utility conflict. We have medium-sized trees that mature at 50 feet or smaller. They're great for medium-sized tree lawns shouldn't cause sidewalk conflicts, and they shouldn't get into uh, the overhead wires, the big high overhead wires. And then we also have a whole selection of large trees. Um, the mantra today is to plant the biggest tree you can get in that site. You know, we're looking for shade trees, beautiful trees that will cool the environment and do the job of a tree, but we don't want to cause problems. I mean, we could plant a pin oak and a small tree lawn, and I won't be around to see it mature, but 20 to 50 years down the road, it's heaving sidewalks, it's in the, in the sewers and such, so that wouldn't be a good steward. So we try to select the trees for the site. The other mantra is select the right tree for the right location for the right reason. So if you want a tree, all you have to do is call. We plant anywhere from Last year it was 300 trees? 350. So we have vacancies and we're trying to fill them up as quickly as we can. Um, so either Jeff or I can come out and look at and assess that and we'll let you uh, within reason have a choice so you can participate in the tree selection. And then um, I also, um, if you have backyard trees that are a concern, there's quite a few emerald or ash trees that are dying. If you want to have an assessment on what you should uh, do to your tree, you notice some dead branches, you notice it's not as vigorous as it used to be, um, I can come out and give you this some advice. Um, and then, you know, you could uh, then call a contractor with, you know, an ed educated um, assessment of the tree. And that uh, pretty much dis uh, discusses the tree pruning and tree removal program as well as the planting program. So if you have any questions, I'd like to open it up to a question period. Yes? Uh, does the city have a, a referral list for private contractors? Yes, we do. Um, and that's, you can get through Jeff. Uh, we, we have contractors that we've dealt with in the past. Um, and we have had good relationship with. Um, we also know that it's like um, going to a car dealer. You can find cheap cars. You can find very expensive cars. So we usually recommend that you call and get at least three estimates. You may get a high. You may get a medium. You may get a low price. Um, so you want to make sure that they have a certified arborist on, on the staff. You might check and make sure that they have insurance because you don't, some of these people that are tree workers um, may not be fully insured and if they drop something on your house they may just pull away. So yes we do. How about replacement of the trees in our tree lawn? On your tree lawn? Mm -hmm. Are you currently without a tree? No, we have two. Okay. But I would like them replaced. Okay. And is there a reason why you want them replaced? Because they were beautiful until recently when they were trimmed. Now there's nothing 
almost left of them, and they look like my house is vandalized. Okay. Um, that's what I was, this is a very passive notification. I mean, I came home and treated them, quite frankly, butcher. Okay. It would have been nice if we had known they were going to do it, maybe been consulted about it, because I've been pruning those trees to keep them off the sidewalk, keep them off the street, and they were beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, they look like crap. Um, you cut everything like seven feet down from our trees. Okay. And the, 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 the house next to it, they have two trees in their tree lawn with low branches, and none of theirs were trimmed. I think they stopped that. Um, the other side. Can I ask where, where you live? We're on Miramar. Miramar. We're not on any of the lists that he read at the beginning. We're right at the corner of Miramar, Meadowbrook, and uh, okay. Washington. We're talking the last three Okay. Um, yeah, and I think I know your trees you're talking about, but uh, the uh, unfortunately some of our younger trees, and the, you're talking young trees, right? Uh, yeah. Six inches or smaller. One was about ten years old when we first moved into the house. Okay. And the tree put it. Okay, so young tree maintenance should be done, and you should be raising up slowly. When that they when slow. okay, well when they haven't been done. Uh, they have to be, sometimes you have to go up a little higher than you would like. But remember what a branch does. Most branches grow out like this when there's no leaves. As soon as the leaves come on the branches, they start pulling the branches back down. And like I said, I've been pruning those trees back for the last few years because they get off of the sidewalk. Okay. Well, we appreciate your help, but uh, when, but, when... But it would, you know, it would have been nice if we had known you were going to do it and had some consult, consulting about it. Okay, uh, that's a, a good point. And a lot of times, um, we do post on online that the work is still passive. I need some okay. more active because we're okay. active people. We okay. spend a lot of money to keep our house looking nice and to upgrade the rest of our house. Mm -hmm. And now we came home from work recently, and like I said, it looks like someone had vandalized our home, and it looks horrible. And you know, it makes us wonder why did we go to all this effort to make our house look nice, and now um, the city has put in efforts to make our house look horrible. Well, let's just uh, take a step back, and uh, I asked for a little patience because right now you're looking at a tree that has no leaves. Okay, so I appreciate that. okay, but give it give it a couple of weeks and see how it looks. They're just, not going to come down that far. Well, I hope they don't, but. Give it a couple of weeks to see how it looks when it's leafed out. The big cuts that are fresh on the tree trunk should have already begun to discolor. They, they won't be as prominent um, in a month or so because it, that discoloration um, kind of blends in with the environment. And the, uh, and from now, if I'm not happy, can you replace it? Can you dig those trees out and give me new trees that are going to be more attractive? Well, um, if the tree declines, as a result of the pruning, or if it gets an insect or a disease problem, we would be certainly willing to evaluate it for replacement. But um, my opinion is those trees are going to respond positively to the pruning. That's why I asked for give us a couple of weeks to see how they look at leaf out. Feel free to give us a call, come out and look at them again. Okay? I know what they look like because we've gone down all of Miramar, and we're not done yet on Miramar. We're going to go all the way to Silsby. So there's more trees to be pruned. We're, it's not that we're looking for a uniform look because we have a lot of different species. Each species is handled a little differently. Okay, so I think yours are hedge maple, if I'm right. And that's a, um, it, it's a very hardy tree. Um, it's very drought resistant, and it's on a corner. Right. Okay, which means it will get a lot of sun, and the tree should respond positively to pruning. Okay, because I know they were healthy before. I know the pruning is um, so if why it's the pruning, they were healthy. Um, because of safety concerns, clearance. Um, we have to. We get a lot of truck damage. It's not always private trucks. It's our trucks. Our plow trucks have to hug the curb. So when they come around your corner and they're hugging that curb, we lose mirrors, we lose um, radios, we lose antennas, and we have truck damage when it's a big limb. Um, so we have to have a certain clearance. If you have a nice wide tree lawn, we don't have to go as heavy as possible. Your tree lawn is what I would call medium to small. 
So we had to go a little heavier. Um, and we tried to get clearance for trucks as well as people on the sidewalks. Okay, we don't want anybody getting hurt. Uh, riding, we have children riding their bicycles. And those um, are granted extended into the sidewalk. We, we keep it very clear. Okay. Well, I, I really thank you for doing what you've been doing because that's postponed what we had to do. But the inevitable for young tree training, we want to get the trees at 10 to 15 years old. They're in that zero to six inch diameter range and that's the perfect time to prune them. Now your trees, we probably have to come back. There'll be a little suckering out from the trunk around the wounds. We'll probably have to come back and take those off or you're welcome to take them off. Um, <clears throat> And that will be the response to the pruning. Now what we're looking for is we told the trees, we don't want you growing down. We want you growing up. There's plenty of room up there to grow. Okay, so the results look stark. I'm very aware of that. But give us uh, some time. And those trees, hedge maples, uh, can be pruned into a hedge. They, you can take a tree and prune it into a hedge. It's a very tough tree response to very heavy pruning. Positive. We're worried about the tree now. We're worried more about the way they look. Okay. Yeah, it's really hard. And I understand that. And I really don't want to see that the rest of the way up the street. Well, you know, the, each uh, we're we're at we're at Meadowbrook. Okay. Um, so you know, we have quite a few trees to do yet. On. I know. Cause when you go up Miramar Pass. Chase you in that way, the trees just look almost good. They do a very good job. Uh, you know, this is winter. So wait till they leaf out um, and see what it looks like. The branches aren't going to come back. <laughs> well, they won't where they were. Okay. The tree's going to try to grow back there, but what, where it will grow is above that. So, um, you know, this is a very common practice. And I understand your objections. A lot of people don't like. They think we're going very severe on uh, tree lawns. It's not the same kind of pruning as front yards where there's no obstructions. It's totally different from a backyard tree pruning. So we have to go a little more severe. Um, and you know, we've had a few complaints about going uh, high, but I, my response is just wait until they leaf out, see what they look like. Okay, because I have a picture of what they look like before. You probably have a very good picture of what they look like before. Let's see what they look like this summer and three to five years later. Well, we really don't have a choice at this point in time, do we? So moving forward, what we would like is that for our city to be a little more proactive about yeah. letting us know when you're going to be doing dramatic changes to our property. Okay. How, how would you like us to do that? Because we, we have a city of beautiful homes. We have a few homeowners with trees. We have 10,000 right. trees. I'm so open to suggestions, you know. You could put, you know, with the, you know, the garbage news, you could let us know with that, you know, what streets you're going to be working on. Okay. So we could consult with you about what you're going to be doing. Okay. Because it, it, it's just, it, it's horrifying to come home and have this tree that, you know, I've watched grow. Mm -hmm. You know, half of it's gone now. It's horrifying. And I, I was really upset. And uh, quite honestly, I, I really, I would prefer if you would remove it and put in crab apples like my neighbor said you didn't even touch those. Those apparently can grow low and you don't mind. Give me a tree that, that is going to not be pruned back and made to look horrible. <coughs> well, um, you no, know, that's something that we'll evaluate as time goes by. Right now, the trees were uh, judged as you know, we took down the trees that were in poor condition or hazardous. We evaluated, you know, what to do with the trees that were in fair condition. And in some cases, we're doing some pretty heavy pruning to get them safe, remove dead branches and such, assess why they're in uh, fair condition. The good condition trees, we have time to work with. So um, I evaluate that. If they're in good condition, they need minimal work. So one of the biggest things we have to do, though, for pruning is to raise up our trees. We have to raise them up. That's an Ohio Revised Code law. It so says. let us know that you're doing this. We okay. have no warning. And, and that's very upsetting that I pay all these taxes 
places to live in this city, and then I come home and I feel like you guys have vandalized my property, and I paid you to do that. It's okay. very offensive to me. Okay. Um, I think that we, we will probably sit back and once this pruning cycle is done, we'll evaluate how we want to proceed as far as ho homeowner notification. Um, we so we had, I'm sorry? Um, we hope to finish um, year on Glendon and then you're going to go to Miramar. Okay, so maybe this week. Okay, so I mean, I'm sorry, but to address, answer that question, we want to get the trees pruned before they leaf up. Right. Okay, because that, that takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping to get done in a week or two weeks. So I've lived in University Heights a long time, and I've never had this happen before. The only thing I had happen with my tree lawn was just after we bought our house, I came home one day and one of our trees in our tree lawn was missing, and when I called the city, they said, Oh, you requested that <coughs> removed, and I said, no, I didn't. And they looked it up, and they said, yeah, Barbara Best requested it removed. And I said, I bought the house from her a couple months ago, and mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, no one told me you were going to remove my tree, and that was a healthy tree at that time. It was the same, uh, I assume the same species. It was very similar to what we have now. That was around 2004, 2005, something like that, you know, right after we bought our house. And so, you know, that was another time I felt like my tree lawn had been vandalized by the city um, without any warning. And um, so I, I, feel like I, I I'm having trouble with what you guys are doing to my okay. I, Barbara, if I may, Barbara, uh, I hear your point. Oh, no, I'm not Barbara. Oh. Barbara's the one I bought my house. I'm okay. sorry. My, my, um, so uh, we hear your point, and we'll address it. Um, homeowner notification. We notify the tree owners that we're going to cut the tree down. Okay. Um, so we do now, but back then you didn't, because I, we got no warning, you know, unless you had communicated with her before she sold the house. But we, as, as at that time, as the current owner, like, we came home one day and our tree was oh, it's, a, it's an SOP to pre-notify homeowners of removal. Because I, I hear you loud and clear about how you felt before and after. Mm -hmm. It's even worse when you come home, you had a tree, you go to work, and you come home, and then there's a stump. Right. We don't want that kind of shock. Mm -hmm. um, and then we put in a new tree, but it's a small tree compared to what you had. Um, you know, we'll take that under advisory. Um, and you know, so how long has this five year cycle plan been in effect? Um, we're on year six, no, seven, seven, and it actually was before that. So it's an interesting we've been in the city 20 years, and this is the first time we've Yeah, so at first house, we never had our tree, nobody ever trimmed their trees on our tree lawn except us, and now at this house, this is the first house. Well, the, the city um, has an assessment which is <coughs> relatively new that pays for more tree maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and the maintenance, we were concerned and the homeowners were concerned that we'd come onto a street and prune one or two trees and pull away. And we get a lot of phone calls saying, well, why didn't you prune my tree? Or why didn't you, you know, look, did you look at this tree? Mm -hmm. And um, so we decided, you know, we're going to treat the city as four sections, four districts or zones. And each zone, we'd assess the streets that needed the most work, and we'd tackle those. We got rid of all the hazardous trees, the ones that kept me up at night. Those trees were taken down first. So the good news is the majority, you know, things change, but uh, the hazards are gone. Now we're looking at structural pruning, deadwood pruning, and we're also looking to uh, train the trees and raise them up so that we have safety. You know, we don't want a fire truck is 15 feet. If I were to prune your trees for 15 feet, nobody would like them. But we can't have a fire truck, you know, not driving in this lane because of a tree branch. What's got to go? So in the case of safety, we do safety pruning. Now on a younger tree, we have more time. Okay, on a um, older tree that's hanging down like a pin oak that almost touching the ground, we, we have to raise those up. And we get calls about how severe we are on that pruning, but the result is those trees are safe now. So 
We understand your concern and we'll try to address them. I'm the one that walks around and does the coding. So I look and say, okay, what can I do to this tree uh, minimally that will get us five to seven years um, safety out of it? So each tree is assessed differently, like I said. And you know, if you want to call and have me come out and look at them um, June, July, and see how they look after they've leafed out and put out new growth, and then the branches are starting to come back down, I'll be glad to come up. Okay. And then, you know, give us time to assess them. If we have droughts and severe winters, some of our trees that are young and healthy now may suffer and decline. Those are the trees we reevaluate and say, um, you know, we'll have to take them out and start all over. But it's kind of hard to get five or 10 years growth on a tree and just say, well, it's not pretty anymore. Let's yank it and start over. That's not a good reason for tree removal. But we evaluate them for health and vigor. Okay, question? Thank you. I think you've answered part of my question. You do assess each individual tree. Correct. Okay. okay. So the other part of my question would be whether or not um, there is a standard height that you are trying to achieve Mm -hmm. Is there? Yes. And what is that? Um, well, it's kind of directed by the Ohio Revised Code. The Ohio Revised Code says 14 to 15 feet over the street and 9 feet over the sidewalk. Okay? And <clears throat> some of the branches that we're taking off are actually 15 or 20 feet into the tree, but they grow like this. So um, the standard height varies according to species diameter size, and condition at the time of the pruning. So at the time of this pruning, as an example, um, just using uh, the resident that was just speaking as an example, you individually looked at that tree and you saw that the branches were at a place where they presented uh, a potential issue. And so that was the reason that you decided to prune that tree, or was it for some other reason? Well. That's, that's a great question. Why do, why do I select a tree for pruning? Well, there's a number of reasons. The first and the, at the top of the list is safety. Uh, aesthetics is in there. The tree species is in there. Uh, the health and vigor of the tree is in there. Um, branch angles and how it's growing are in there. So um, that's why I walk the street and I do a 360 around the tree. And as I'm going around, I'm saying, okay, what, how do I want this tree to look when we're finished? So I start counting the branches that I think have to come off, okay? And as the contractor can tell you, they get a list and say, it says remove eight lower branches. That doesn't mean nine, it means eight, doesn't mean seven, okay? I actually count how many are off, and then I look at the fin finished product and say, do they have to take more, or is that enough, or was that too much? So we're constantly assessing. This, these are living organisms, so it's not like pruning a, a fake tree. You know, you can pull off a couple of branches and put them back on if, they, if you took too much off. So I try to err on the uh, health and vigor of the tree. You know, we know that we can <coughs> the tree will be there for the next pruning cycle, so sometimes we don't have to go up as high. It really is driven by safety and the vigor of the tree to start with. And I have another question. Because um, over the years, um, a similar situation has arisen where residents were concerned that they didn't receive any notification about the front mm -hmm. And I was under the impression that the um, residents were going to receive uh, some type of information, whether it was a flyer or something that they well, it is, but in today's society, uh, a lot of our homeowners aren't home. Um, we've tried door hangers, we've tried knocking on doors, we've had neighborhood uh, block meetings, uh, but we don't reach everybody. So in today's digital society, we post it on our website, and there's a map on the website, I believe, and then the streets. Not everybody is going to the internet look at the University of Heights website 
website to try to figure out what's going on tomorrow okay. with my tree or with my house. And so I would, I would suggest that the city um, reconsider how it provides notification to the residents because it is a big shock when you leave home and you come back and not just your tree, but every tree on the street looks like it's been pruned. Some people would say it looks like it's been butchered. And I think a lot of resentment and misunderstanding could be avoided with better you know, we'll, we'll evaluate ways of doing it, but we have a limited labor staff, um, and we can't be doing door hangers or flyers. Well, I think you should uh, think about it. I, you know, I, I don't want to try to decide right now at this minute what is okay. the best way to do it, but I think that there are ways that it could be accomplished. Okay. And then my final question has to do with the uniformity of the street. So over the years, I've been told that you want to put in different species so that they don't all die off at the same time for well, a lot of different reasons. Correct. Um, but uh, you can put in different species and still have somewhat of a uniform look. Mm -hmm. are, do we go for a uniform look? Because I haven't seen it if we do. Um, we, uh, we are actually, we have uh, blocks of three sometimes where we'll put in three species. Um, when Jeff specifies the tree planting, we look at what's available in the nursery. And, and that's the real driver. It's getting harder and harder to find trees. So when we find the tree species in the, in the quantities we want, um, we try to plant in threes and or put three or four species on one street. And that then has uniformity in the fact that you'll see similar looking trees but um, we, we have to learn from past mistakes. Um, <clears throat> I, I was around when the Dutch elm disease hit uh, the Heights area, and we lost uh, tens of thousands of elm trees. And the answer back then was cut the elm down and plant ash trees. Well, now we're losing all the ash trees because of the emerald ash borer. So we have to have diversity. Right now we're planting over 20 species of trees. We're planting uh, natives as well as exotics, we're, or non-natives, and we're planting small, medium, and large trees. And I'm looking for the tough tree. Right. Um, and what which I'm looking was for is a is a is a end result okay. where uh, it adds to the to the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I have some I have some on my feet to the aesthetic of the street. Okay. So I'm not impressed when I see a little straggly tree that's not going to grow more than 10 feet tall on the street when we could have inserted something that would add to the beauty of the street. And it's a point well taken. When, I, when we look at a planting site, we look at what's down below first. We're looking at the width of the tree lawn, okay, so because we don't want to plant a tree that's going to heave sidewalks. That would be bad. We also don't want to plant a tree that's going to grow up into the wires and then CEI has to come and you know, give them a flat top. So there are limits to what we can plant. And then the underground utilities are the driving factor in today's society. The gas company has just begun re uh, repairing their gas mains and doing all the connections. They're cutting a lot of tree roots. So we have to plant a tree that will be, we locate the gas, connection, we locate the water and sewer, and we plant nine feet away. So that's why a lot of our trees, or not a lot, some of our trees are not centered on the, on the home because of what's underground. So we can't always have that uniformity, but that's something we're trying to get. Um, but, you know, it's what's, what the tree lawn offers that is, uh, really drives our tree selection. We spend a lot of money in the city on trees. We do? Uh, planting, removal, pruning, and uh, I consider it a considerable investment, and I just want to make sure that the end result, the return on that investment, um, is worth it. Uh, that's our goal as well. Is It's the city of beautiful homes, and we want a beautiful tree to, to offset or sit in front of that beautiful home. Um, you know, but these are nat natural things. Sometimes they don't grow the way we want them. Sometimes they get insects or diseases. Sometimes we have storms where the tree, half the tree is broken out. 
Um, so, you know, we do our best. And design is very important. Um, it's, it's not the number one priority for tree planting and tree maintenance, so it's safety first. Design is in the top 10. And, um, you know, tough trees for tough locations is a major driver. Your points are well taken. And I, I've been in the um, urban forestry field for 40 years. Um, I hear these concerns about pruning. Wow, what did you do? You butchered my tree. Unfortunately, that's a, a response for pruning. Um, my wife doesn't like me pruning. I go out and prune my trees, and she says, you didn't prune for the aesthetics. And I said, well, no, I pruned for safety. And so I, I can't always make you happy, but I can tell you that what we did to the tree is the most recommended tree procedure that currently exists in today's field. It may not be aesthetically pleasing, but we are trying our best to do what's best for the tree. So, you know, um, <clears throat> keep an eye on what's going on in Miramar and Glendon. Um, we will be announcing sometime in the summer our next pruning cycle. Next planting cycle for fall. Planting for fall. And then we will be doing another pruning um, of certain streets and certain trees that have been pruned um, next winter, winter of 1819. Any other questions? I, we did want to bring up uh, our contractor, let them say something. If you'd like. If you want to come up. Unless you're scared. <laughs> <laughs> you a question for us. Well, you'll notice, you know, what I like about Parks Tree it is they don't, they can't hide their trucks. They're yeah. bright red, and you know that they're on the street. They're very approachable. I've been told that the homeowner comes out and says, you know, we don't like what you're doing to the tree. Could you stop and get the city to come out and talk to us? So, unfortunately, it's too late for you, but what uh, we've been doing is we, uh, address the concerns of the people. And we have actually changed some of the specs addressing their concerns. You know, um, so we're learning and we're evolving and, uh, you know, but the bottom line is we, the trees have to be safe. So I understand that, but I just feel you need to take aesthetics into consideration a little more than you have. Okay. You said you trimmed for safety, not aesthetics. Well, we take care of our home and maintain our home partly for the aesthetics because it looks nice. Like you said, we're the city of beautiful homes. Right now, I don't feel like my home is very beautiful because it looks like the trees have been dandelion. And, and you know, it, it takes a, someone like you to make me look at it from your standpoint more. We've had more people say, you know, when I look out my window, I don't want to see the street light. I don't want to see the house across the street. So, you know, when I walk around the tree, now I'm looking to see what it looks like from all four sides mm -hmm. as well. So I try to get it before and after and say, you know, can I please everybody? Um, and we make it, believe me, I'll make an attempt in the future. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you.